Brian, then welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I'm amazing. 10 out of 10. You guys are great, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, we're all good, <laughs> mate. Yeah, man. It's, it's, good to, it's good to see you again. I think we last spoke maybe sort of eight, nine months ago, I think. Yeah. It feels like forever, to be honest. I, was, I wasn't I was even sure. I was like, I was like, hopefully I don't say stuff that I said last time, but <laughs> it feels like a, a lifetime ago, right? Yeah, well, obviously a lot's happened since the last time we spoke to you. Obviously, the big one being quite recent, but you obviously got the call. You got the call for ADCC. Yeah. So let's start there, mate, because obviously uh, that was a massive opportunity for you. And, and tell us about how that how that happened. How did you get the call? How did you feel? Mm, yeah, so initially, I didn't really think I was going to get the call. Uh, I'm really good friends with Michael Pixley. And so I flew out to Pedigo about six or seven weeks before ADCC just to be a partner with Pixley and Couch just to help them prepare. I was like, uh, I'm probably just going to do the ADCC Open and I'll train with them, help them. And I think like the first or second day that I landed, um, obviously all the CJI stuff was going on. And then a guy pulled out who wasn't even, who didn't even pull out from CJI. Uh, his name was Gutenberg. He was a, he's a gee guy. Um, I guess he was supposed to do ADCC and then he just pulled out. He didn't go do CJI either. He just, I, I don't really know exactly. Mo said that he was just like, Oh, I'm not ready to do it, I guess. And Mo was like, do you want to do it? I was like, well, Sure, I'm here. So like I'm at Pedigo, so might as well. Why not? It's just more competition. And I figured I figured I was gonna be the the last seed. So I was like, ah, what do I have to lose? Like, go <laughs> ahead and do it. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Obviously we uh we put you in that post for the last CJI spot. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was I was disappointed because I did the post and I didn't really hear or get a reaction from you. And I was like, that's strange. I thought you'd bite my arm off for that sort of uh, exposure. And then of course the announcement came. So uh was obviously yeah. very happy to, to see you in ADCC. And, yeah. and how much notice did you have before before actually competing? Six. Six weeks, six, seven weeks. Okay. So but like I said, I was already uh like Pixel and Couch were already kind of mid 12 ish. I don't know. I honestly, to be honest, I don't know how long their camp is. I assume it was around 12 weeks, but I got there with about six weeks left to ADCC. So I got there with like five hard weeks left of training. And yeah, so, and I'm usually in pretty good shape. So I, I was just like, whatever. Yeah. Six weeks. Six weeks is a long time, isn't it? Yeah. And I was like, if I'm getting whooped by these guys every day, it's like, I might as well go get, I might as well go compete too. <laughs> Who cares? You know? So yeah. yeah. So yeah, easy decision for you then by the sound of it. Yeah, I mean, it's just an opportunity to compete. I don't really care if I win or lose. I just go out there and try to beat them up and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, so with um, with sort of the going in, knowing your sort of position in the seeding, did you therefore know that Penna would be your first match? I figured, I figured me and Heath, uh, Pedigo, we pretty much game planned the whole time. Uh, like we assumed, okay, Pinna is most likely going to be, you know, uh, my first round match because Pinna was for sure the obvious one seed. And uh, I was the last invite at the weight class. So it's like, it was pretty obvious. Like it would have been insane if I had anyone else. Um, I was really happy to have Pinna as the match because he's amazing. It's like, I, I don't know how other people are, but I, I just want to compete against the best guys. So I was like, oh, this is great. So we pretty much did my game plan the whole time was just outside passing because Pinna is really good at like that bear trap like in his Gordon match. Um, yeah, just outside passing and just trying to get him to wrestle and yeah, just having fun. To, but yeah, basically to answer the question, I, I knew it was going to be Pena. Yeah, okay. And, you know, sort of having that sort of game plan and, and, and identifying that, you know, where the strengths and weaknesses are. Did you did you go in like relatively confident? Did you think you could take that match potentially? I don't know if I would say I was like confident, but I was just like, uh, I was present. I, I, I was just like, ah, I'm not nervous. Like, uh, I think it was, I think, yeah, I, I felt like I didn't have anything to lose. So I was just like, I'm going to go out and try to, you know, try to beat them up and hopefully I can beat them. But I mean, I, I knew like realistically, I mean, Pena's a legend. Uh, I'm not an idiot. You know, I was like, Oh, it's, it's going to be a, a high mountain to climb. But like I said before, I, I want to face the best guys in the world and I might not beat them yet, but you know, five or six, I mean, who knows? Like eventually I will start beating them. I just, I just want to compete against them, you know? And was he, was he as good as you thought he was going to be? Yes. He was amazing. He was super good. He, I, it's weird. Cause uh, yeah, it's like, he never, 
he, he, it's like his game isn't very, there's not very much pressure with his game. You know, like with Gordon, it's like, you feel like you're drowning with him. It, it felt like he was like lull, lulling me to sleep. Like he, he was just like baiting me like to come into him. Um, and he was just better. Like, I was just like, Oh, well, you know, nothing I'm doing is working, you know? Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that's a good way to describe it. He just felt he was just better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do get that feeling sometimes when you roll with someone. You just think, uh, if yeah. you're pointless at this point, don't you? you know? yeah. Yeah. I wasn't getting beat up. I didn't feel like I was getting beat up either. It was like I, it, it was just like a te- like a you know, the huge technical gap, you know. Yeah, it, you have like no answers for it. That's it. I had no answer. I was like, well, because people were like, man, why'd you try to cartwheel? Why'd you try to do a cartwheel? I was like, because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't freaking do anything. I was, I was <laughs> trying my best. To, I was just like, I gotta, I gotta make some sort of attempt, you know? Uh, it's just like the way that I am. Like I'm, uh, I want to create action. And I was like, well, I'm probably going to lose this match. So let me just, <laughs> let me just push the pace and try to do something because I could have honestly just sat there in the standing position and stared at him <laughs> for the, you know, after he scored all those points and just like lost the match by decision or sorry, lost the match by points. But I was just like, I've, I'd rather just, I don't know. There, there's no difference in getting submitted and losing by points in my opinion. It's all just losing. So I was just trying to have fun and, and do some cool stuff while, while I was taking my L. Yeah, mate. I think, I think it was a really good show of yourself, mate. I yeah, thought, I thought you looked great. And were you like overall pretty happy with your performance? Like looking back and thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm super happy. I try not to be too performance driven. Um, I was really happy with my pre- my preparation. Um, I got I really got out of my comfort zone. Like I said, I was uh, training at Pedago, and it was really really tough. It was very smart, but it was very tough. Um, it's like humbling, especially with you know the jujitsu level. I'm still pretty young at jujitsu, and uh, in practice, I really try to dial back my athleticism. Whereas in matches, I'm just like full on. Um, so in practice I was just getting beat up, you know, like, uh, a lot. And then it was like, it was one day I'm just hand fighting Pixley for forever and we're just beating each other up. And then the next day I'm doing like situational rounds with like, uh, the Murdoch brothers who are two of the small guys at Pedagon. They're just leg locking me like a million times a day. And then every time I do something, couch is telling me how bad I am. And it's like, (laughs) yeah, it's, uh, it was humbling. Um, but it was so amazing because it was like very, uh, it felt like a, a very good family vibe when I was there. And I felt like I, I really improved and I hope that I, I made them improve. But at the end of the day, I, regardless of the result, I was very happy because I felt like it was the best I had prepared. You know, my wrestling was super on point going with me and Pixley are just, I mean, we're probably two of the better wrestlers in jujitsu and we were wrestling with each other pretty much daily. And then my jujitsu, it just gradually got a lot better with uh, all the guys helping and Heath, of course, um, so I, I was really happy. And like I said, I was just very present. Like I was just so grateful because I did not earn my spot at ADCC. I got invited and it is not the way that I wanted to go to ADCC, but I wasn't going to say no to it. Yeah. And how did you find like the, like being part of the event, like the production of it, the, the size of it, but tell us about the whole experience. Huh? Yeah. It, uh, it was cool. I don't, I guess like, uh, I'm sure Pixley would say the same thing if you guys ever talked to him. I guess like when you come where we're from, like in the wrestling world, we, we've both wrestled at like every kid's national tournament, every high school national tournament, every college national. So it's like, it didn't really feel, I didn't feel the moment at all. Like I, I didn't really take in any of that at all. I was just like, just, you know, very present. So uh, I didn't even notice the crowd. I didn't notice all the production stuff. I was just, just, just very yeah. focused on my match. And after I had lost, I was just focused on like Pixley and uh, couch. And uh, other than that, I literally just, I, I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't take it in very much. I wish I would have, maybe if I was just like going as a fan, I could have had a chance to take it in more, but it kind of went or it kind of came and went, you know, I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, it does. And I think if you've got that, you know, that prior competitive experience to the level that you guys do. And, and, and certainly if you've still got people in, in the game or in the fight, so to speak, then obviously you're going to be focused on that, aren't you? So I get that. Yeah. How did, how did those lads get on? Uh, Pixley did really well. Um, obviously you guys saw it. He, he yeah. submitted, people don't talk about his first match. His first match, he submitted a ADCC silver medalist, 
the uh, Vinicius Ferreira guy. Yeah, I've seen um, that. Yeah, he, it was good. He darsed him. And then, obviously, with the Marigali thing, uh, he hit the Harai Goshi and messed up his shoulder and then darsed him. And, uh, yeah, and then in his Rafael Lovato match, uh, I'm sure he'll say the same thing. We talked about it. It's like he, he didn't really get very much of a warm-up in, and he didn't he didn't pull the trigger very much. You know, I felt like that was a very winnable match, and he feels like it was a very winnable match. But based off of his, like, wrestling style, sometimes it – He's so good at like shot defense and hand fighting that he doesn't shoot as much as he probably should, especially in matches like that where it went to a decision and Rafael kind of did not engage with Pixley. So it was like, uh, I mean, Rafael is a veteran, so he's very smart. Like he, he did just enough to where like he would push Pixley out of bounds, but then anytime Pixley would engage for like an overtie, he would just like duck out of it. So he, he got like out, out, experienced i felt like in that match and it's it's weird uh i mean he, he, again i'm not saying anything he wouldn't say like he if he would i felt like if he would have pulled the trigger a couple more times like actually shot to a knee and you know he is he has good submission defense uh, i think he could have won the match but it is what it is uh couch lost in his first match and over time i believe he got he ended up getting rear naked choked by uh I don't honestly I don't even know the guy's name. Some Brazilian guy who ended up getting third place. That match yeah. just was heartbreaking to watch, to mm-hmm. be honest. Um Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But th- that's basically it as far as the other guys. Yeah, yeah. Obviously sort of Pixley Marigali was obviously a huge upset, wasn't it? Um That was crazy. I knew, I'm not surprised though. Marigali had a very bad game plan. He had a very bad game plan. He just kept wrestling up. You're like, why would you do that? <laughs> It's yeah. so, it's not, it's, Marigali's amazing, you know? It, it was just, like, kind of a unique thing. Like, for me, I was like, oh, maybe Marigali's probably going to go into, like, X-Guard, do this. No, he just kept wrestling up to a single leg, which I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of Mac- Michael's stuff, but, like, anytime someone grabs a single leg on him, he does a Uchimada or Haraya Goshi, and that's including me. Like I can't grab a single leg on him because he's, he's so long and he's so good with his hips. And you're just like, man, I don't know what Marigali was thinking, to be honest. Do you think he, do you he, think he knew he was that good at that sort of game? I think that might've been the problem. That's Maybe thinking, he didn't, yeah. didn't know who he was or just went in I, cocky. I, I think it was an ego thing. Yeah. yeah just yeah. being like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to beat him at his own game type of thing. And then just, yeah, I, I wonder. Yeah. Especially after the first throw, the first throw was so clean. Like, even mm-hmm. though, yeah, I would, if I was him, I mean, I don't know. I'm not Marigali. He's amazing. But I would have been like, maybe I should not do that again. Maybe I should not wrap <laughs> back up again. <laughs> it's probably not a really good idea. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting. I hope they get to have another match again in the future. I'm sure they will. I'm sure when, I, I think Marigali said he's going to be out for like five or six months. But, Hopefully they can have that match again because um, I think Pixley will beat them again. I think it's just it's good for Pixley to get that match again and shut the people up who are like, oh, you just won because he got hurt. But it's like if you actually watch the match, he yeah. forced Marigali, he he forced Marigali into two front headlocks. He threw him twice and he passed. He like had that near pass with the knee cut, and it's like Marigali just wasn't doing anything. So I, I want to see that match again. I mean, it's, it's, of course, someone's going to take this. It's not disrespecting Regali. Like it's, it was just like Pixley. I support Pixley and it's, I want him to have that match again. So he can be like, look, I, I actually beat this guy. And in, in training, how do you get on with Pixley? Cause he looks incredible at his foot sweeps and his bits and pieces. It looks a very different style to kind of how you wrestle and how yeah. your, your stand up game is. How, how do you get on with that in the training room? It's horrible. It's torturous. <laughs> he's, he's like, uh, He's amazing. He's so good. He, and it's weird because, uh, so in the, we've talked about this before with the divisions, right? The D1, D2, D3, NAI stuff. Like lots of people will kind of put like Pixley's accomplishments down because he's a D2 national champ. Right. But, uh, the dude was the, like the number one recruit coming out of high school in the U S and was committed to one of the biggest, uh, division one schools. And then some stuff didn't work out. And then he had to go to the NAI, then D2. So, like, Ixley's just a mate. He's, he's a class wrestler, you know what I mean? Like, he was a top – he was one of the top 1%. You know, he's 
he was the only guy in high school to give Bo Nickel close matches. Essentially, like I don't know if you guys know about Bo Nickel. As yeah, a yeah, we know Bo Nickel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, it's hard to explain like how good he actually is at wrestling. It's also weird because he's he's very unique because he doesn't really shoot very much. He's just very slide by heavy hands. He's going to beat you up and he's going to wait for you to shoot on him and he's going to put that three quarter on or he's going to try to throw you. And it's really frustrating for me because I'm a shooter. Like I shoot a lot and uh, it's not very, it's not, it doesn't yeah. go very well. Yeah. yeah, I, was, yeah. I was watching him foot sweep someone the other day on Instagram and it was just over and over again. I felt so bad for the lad he was doing it on. I didn't even know who it was, but. He was, just, yeah. he was just, it was just horrible to watch because every time mate, he was trying to get his foot and he was sweeping him the other way. And I was like, poor oh God. Bro, anytime it's me and him, I just try to beat him up. We're, because we have to be like you, like with Pixley, it's like uh, I, I have like a love hate relationship with training with him because like uh, you, you have to fight him. Like you have to be willing to be like, I'm going to fight you. And you're not really winning, but you're just like, you know, you're, you're doing your best. You know, he's, He's a very intense go, to be quite honest, and he's the only person. Uh, well, he's like one of the only people in like my time doing jujitsu where I'm just like Jesus fucking Christ, like <laughs> such a fucking animal, bro. So that's he's, he's that's still, he's still a purple belt, like uh, like you, isn't he? Yeah, we're both purple belts. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking it's, wild, isn't it? Give you give yeah. you boys another few years. How old is he? Is he the same age as you? Uh, he's a little older. He's he's two years older. He's twenty. Yeah, he's twenty eight. Yeah, still so young though, isn't it? You know, you, yeah, by yeah. the time you, you boys are black belts in your thirty, yeah. your early thirties, you're gonna be you're gonna be a yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, we both uh, we both gotta keep working on our guard though. I've I've been uh, I've been working with one of the coaches here at TriStar a lot on my on just like guard retention and man, it's I've really been putting like a very big focus on it, um, especially after the fleet match where I just like I did. He, he just hit that like row drag on me. And I was like, Oh, what the hell? Like I always learned like, you know, like frame on them like this. And immediately I do that. He freaking passes me. And I'm like, okay, I need to take some time and really work on developing a guard. So I think once me and Pixley both develop a guard a little bit more, I'm, I'm sure that's when our coaches will, you know, promote us. But, uh, we've only been purple belts for like two years each. So I think it'll probably be a little bit more time before, mm. you know, at least I hope I don't want to be a brown belt yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think like when you, I know you've um, you did uh, IBJJF no yeah, I think didn't you previously? Yeah, yeah, two years ago. Yeah, so that's a different story. But obviously, with like submission grappling, like belts are just irrelevant, really, aren't they? Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we with with it, their, their wrestling background alone gives them so so many years on the mats in it before. Yeah, for sure. I know uh, you said you didn't get much time to watch the tournament. Did you manage to catch any of Owen Jones's uh, performances at all? After the fact, I did. So, like, uh, the day after ADCC was over, I went back and watched it because uh, uh, I'm really good friends with Gabriel Souza. So, I was like, ah, oh, man. But I really like yeah. Owen Jones. So, it was just like, it was a bit of a heartbreak because I'm really good friends with Gabriel Souza because – I did my, I previously did my ADCC trial camps at Essential and uh, him and Fionn were there um, at the time. So it was heartbreaking, but it was still also, it was still pretty awesome. Uh, Owen has such a swagger. So yeah. it's, I don't, it's, he's so, he's a cool guy, man. He's, he's such a dog and I'm so happy for him. He is so good, and he's only nineteen. He's just yeah, he's, yeah. He's done so well. I don't know if you remember, mate, but it, it was actually you that 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 put us onto him um, when we yeah. spoke to you last. Actually, you mentioned you were a fan, and we reached out. We've had him on since, of course, and he's back on in uh, November. November, he's coming down to another seminar. Yeah, yeah. So we've really? uh, yeah we've done a bit of a relationship with him as a result of you putting us onto him. So, That's yeah, awesome, dude. That. Yeah, dude. Of course, he's he's amazing. I he's his mindset, man. He's crazy. Like he's a little <laughs> psychopath, I think. Yeah. yeah he is yeah that little man energy you know what i mean like it's crazy but yeah yeah he's super technical as well i was watching a load of his stuff and you know his energy is so good but he's so technical so so technical. freaking and I don't think technical. he gets and I, I, mean, I don't think he gets enough credit at times for how technical he is because he's so fast at the same time yeah. and for his yeah. age you think how good is he going to be by the time he's like 25 yeah you know, know. it's it's it's, it's mind-boggling really yeah it? it's mental and it's funny because when he when we come when he come down for the podcast he came down and did it in person and uh we got him in for a seminar as well and i got roped into being like the body for uh, for the techniques mm -hmm. he was showing in the seminar 
and just his leg entanglements, mate. The the amount of pressure and tightness in some of those entanglements were just uh, you know unreal. At one point, he was like, "You need to can you move your leg?" And I was like, "Mate, I, I can't move my leg without <laughs> yeah. feeling when I break my knee, yeah, like, yeah, because yeah. you're so tight on the hips." Yeah, yeah. We, we had a we had a we had a little roll, only like two minute roll. He was going to probably ten percent, and he got me in like a I don't know what it was really, it was some leg lock. And yeah, honestly, my, 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 ankle, my ankle was killing for about three months. Mate, it was, he got you in reverse cowgo and did the toe hold on you, did didn't he? he? Yeah. That what <laughs> really? That's yeah. hilarious, bro. That's such a weird position. Oh, it's, it's a, it's, it, I, I try and hit it now and again, and it is, it is a really powerful position if you can get it. But at the same time, like when 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 you're getting on people, they don't know what the fuck's going on. Though. Yeah, he covered that quite a bit in the seminar, mate. So there's lots of footage of me just on all fours in a very precarious position with another person. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not much you can do. One of uh, one of the brown belts at TriStar, he 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 submitted me today with uh, yeah from the same position that reverse close guard like toe hold position. You're just like, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> so yeah, it's, just just helpless, yeah. isn't you? Yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. And, and yeah. you can put on such a good submission from there. He, he's like you said, he's really good at, at locking it on tight and and quick. And you know, by you know, he didn't even put it on hard with me. You know, he was being it being pretty nice. But even still, my ankle was clicking for months. <laughs> oh, he, he's amazing. He he's he's a hundred pounds smaller than me, and he'd fuck me up. So <laughs> yeah. he, he, he's amazing. Yeah, I think he's I think he's heading across the pond to you guys, isn't he? I think. Really to Atlanta, stay? I think, is it? Yeah, he's opened up Apex Atlanta yeah. in Georgia. Oh, he opened up a gym in Georgia? Yeah, that's what he's doing, yeah. He's, uh, he's what? Apex. Yeah, that's what he's doing, yeah. That's crazy. Why Georgia? I don't know, mate. I, I, I think he's got some family there. Is that's it? what he said. Yeah, he's got oh, some okay. family connections out there. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong, but what? that's what he said to me. That's crazy. Is there huh. not much of a grappling scene in, scene in, in Georgia then, mate? Not other than Atlanta, like Atlanta has, uh, like Ryan Aitken is from Atlanta. He's an ADCC vet. Uh, uh, there's a couple other guys, Paul Ardia. He's from Atlanta. He's, in, he's, he was at ADCC this year also. Mm. So there's some really good, uh, Sean Applegate is a coach. Like there's really good jujitsu in Atlanta, but I don't really know about the rest of Georgia. Uh, plus Georgia's just, but I think he is doing Kentucky. Out. So it's he like is a, doing Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, so he's in Atlanta, I think. Yeah, that's, he is that's where in he's Atlanta. Heading. So. Nice. Makes yeah, sense. So, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, bright future for him for sure. What did you make of the whole like ADCC CJI debacle, mate? And was there ever an opportunity potentially for you to jump into CJI? Because they obviously brought in quite a few wrestlers. No, I don't think I'm like popular enough. I don't like... Oh, um, yeah, not yet. Yeah, yeah, Coming. not yet. I don't, <laughs> but it, it, it's whatever. I, I thought CJI, like I've said this before, I think it's amazing. I think like, uh, I think it literally was all good. For one, it gave a ton of people opportunities to compete at ADCC. For two, it gave the athletes at ADCC some show money. It wasn't a lot, but it was show money. It was 2,500 and that's public. So it's not like I'm saying a secret, right? Um, and then it was just super cool to, uh, it, it created like, this opportunity for like the ADCC champs and the CJI champs that like create these really big, big money super fights like uh, Nicky Rod and Gordon, right. Or Nicky Rod and Kynan, you know, like you want to see, like people want to see those, those matches are Cade versus literally Mika again. Like everyone wants to see that again. Or, you know, yeah. so I, I thought it was all good. Uh, I watched CJI like a week after ADCC because I was kind of burned out on jujitsu after ADCC. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was super burned out to be honest. I, I watched it. I really, I really liked the minus 80 division. The plus 80 division was a bit boring besides like Nicky Rod, bro. That dude looked incredible. He looked so good. I don't know who's going to beat him right now. Yeah. That's what I mean. I think, I genuinely think he beats Gordon at the moment. He just yeah. looks so fit and strong and just technically really good. He just blew through that division, didn't he? Like as if it was nothing. He killed it. I think the the biggest telling one was the rematch with Owen Livesley. It was yeah. just it looked like a different match. It was just a different match completely. Yeah, I wonder how much the the kind of alley or the pit played in that match versus the last one though. Right, because he ran him out of balance like ten times in the last one. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's why uh, I don't know if you guys saw the the Jason Wolf uh, reel that he made about like kind of making fun of jujitsu people, but it's like 
jujitsu people don't know how to stay on the mat. Like that's like a big thing. <laughs> that's why I, I really like about the alley is because like you can't just you can't just like uh, you can't just back out out of bounds and yeah. then just reset. It's so annoying. Whereas like in wrestling, I don't know if you guys watch wrestling, but in wrestling, in freestyle wrestling, it's a point if you step out of bounds, and then in folk style wrestling, it's a it's a caution or like a stall call, and eventually that leads to negative points. So people are really good at staying in the middle of the mat. In jujitsu, it often like oh it lets you just run out of the mat, and they're like oh yeah, it's all good, just reset. <laughs> You're like. You're like fuck this is so stupid like so i think the alley was awesome because it it was just like hey you can stay in the center you don't ever have to touch the wall a couple people never even touched it but if you if, if you like to play on the edge that's how we would call it in wrestling it's like you're gonna get in trouble and i think yeah. that Owen was kind of playing on the edge a bit and nikki rod's so big and so powerful that it's like what are you gonna do if he puts you down on the the, the wall you're you're pretty much done for. So I was happy to see that. I think from a spectator's point of view as well, the, the alley is so good. It just, the, the action doesn't stop. One of my peeves yeah. of jujitsu is just restarting constantly. You know, someone's so got much. someone in a good heel hook and they just roll, 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 oh, it's out of bounds. And then it's yeah. reset and then they're reset and stood up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. I thought CJI as a spectacle was amazing just be like so good the 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 cade tack it imagine if that didn't have the the alley it would have just oh, been out of bounds yeah. constant you know but because yeah. they couldn't go anywhere <laughs> it just was yeah, yeah. it's probably the best grappling match ever it was so good it was very uh it was it was very exhausting to watch you're like dang <laughs> Those guys like with that are like 170 pounds with like wrestler styles like they're they have crazy cardio so that was a crazy match to watch. I mean, it's probably one of the most viewed matches on YouTube now too. Like when they posted it, and you look at the analytics, you're like, "That was crazy." So that that I think is my new amazing. favorite grappler. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, mate. I think uh, just watching him, I've watched him a few times, but watching him in CGI, I just like what he done to Nicky Ryan was just. You know, it yeah. was just horrible to watch in the end. I was just like, oh, God, Nicky. Like, yeah. I, felt, I felt bad for him. Mate, I, I do think O'Flanagan was, was close with that triangle. Oh. Yeah, he was, yeah. I love Owen O'Flanagan. You saw him reach for the shin? Yeah. I think if he yeah. caught that shin, shin. he yeah, would have yeah. maybe yeah, caused him some real problems. Yeah. yeah, I think he Yeah, I, I, that's that's one of my new favorite grapplers is Owen O'Flanagan. That yeah, dude's he's great, isn't he? And he's hilarious. Great. He's got a great personality. <laughs> so he's yeah. a beast, and he has an amazing personality. And I'm like, this... He, he's really blowing up since last ADCC when he got fourth, but that dude's amazing. That was also one of the better matches was Tackett versus O'Flanagan. Mm, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And again, though, showing how good Tackett was at times passing his guard because his guard is outrageously good. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, for him to even pass his guard, I was like, fair play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, that minus eighty division was crazy, man. Just in so general, good, wasn't it? yeah. Leary's Leary's guard, though, man, like that is unbreakable. That was the worst match in the world, though. The the <laughs> oh, yeah. match. That was <laughs> yeah. the worst match to watch in the world. You're like, ah, nothing. And for so much money, <laughs> for so yeah. much money as well. Yeah. But, but I guess that makes sense. It's like uh, it's a million dollars. You you can't play for the fans here. You have to play for like play it safe. Play your A game as well. Yeah, it was so boring. It was I I actually never finished watching it. I started watching it and it was five rounds, right? Like five five minute rounds. I watched like three of the rounds and I was just like, ah, that this is. I I'd already heard it's there's no submission, so I was like, this is probably just going to be the whole match. And yeah, there was one there was one section I think where um, I think Levi maybe swept Rotolo and come on top, and and Levi's guard passing is really good as well. Um, <laughs> and he started like working some passes and then he passed his guard didn't he and, yeah. then he, and then you could see Cade was like nope I'm yeah. standing back up now yeah yeah <sighs> so I think it would have been interesting if they'd reverse roles for, for a little bit longer yeah. It, yeah. it was it was boring but at the same time you got to kind of marvel at how good his guard was yeah you know I, I, I love you know I play guard quite a lot and I just, it was just unbelievable how good his guard retention was and going into K guard, then coming back through and spinning the other side. And, yeah. You know, it was, it was, you know, I, I still struggle. He, he lost in, you know, Cade in 25 minutes, couldn't pass his guard. Yeah. Which is yeah, kind of crazy. 
you know, that's a crazy thing. How do, how do you lose if someone can't even pass your guard, you know, and yeah. I understand pressure, this and that. But, you know, he had he had quite a few submission attempts, especially at the start. I don't know. I think he was very unlucky losing. Yeah, yeah. but I think because of the, the scoring and I think it was pushing yeah. the action, I think that was probably what, what tipped it for him. Yeah, I think mm. it was just super close. I think it's... Uh, it's what you prefer. I think if you were an outsider watching that, you'd say Cade won all, all day long. But if you're a yeah. bit more into jiu-jitsu and guard play, you, think, you know, for me, it was like, that's unbelievable to, yeah, to be yeah. able yeah. to do that. Yeah, very impressive. Especially with Cade. Especially with Cade. He's probably mm. one of the best guard passers in the world. Yeah. yeah. yeah what, did you think, what did you think of that rule set with how they were scoring the matches? Yeah, it was, it was like the, uh, the, the MMA rule, like scoring. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. I guess it was okay. I'm, I'm not really as like, I, I never really watched MMA growing up still. Now I don't really watch MMA. So it's a bit confusing to me, but I guess it makes sense. I guess if you're an avid MMA watcher, I, I'm not, you know, so uh, I don't really understand like 10, nine, 10, eight. I, I understand like if it's a 10, seven, I think there was like one round, like Tackett versus Nicky Ryan. There was like a 10, seven and one of the, yeah. like, I understand that means there's like a huge disparity, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't really understand the 10-point must system very much. Yeah, it's it's weird, but essentially it's basically if you win the round, you get you essentially get a point. And if you lose mm-hmm. the round, you get no points. That's in theory what they're saying. And if you okay. really dominate, then you get a two-point advantage versus a no point, uh, like zero points. Mm-hmm. So because it, I don't know why it's a 10-must system, but it's one person gets 10, the loser gets nine. Mm-hmm. So there's a one-point difference. So it, okay. just just think of it the other way around, like one nil, two nil. So that's basically how it works. So if you win a round, you get a point advantage, and then obviously that that point's locked in, and then you go into the next round and you kind of restart, and whoever wins that round, you get a point advantage. So basically, okay. what it allows you to do um, is you could, I mean, you could in theory lose the the first round terribly but only ever really be like two, maybe three points behind going into the second and the third round. So what it, it means is you could, I guess, push the action, take more risks. Um, obviously, bar being submitted, there's only so far you can fall behind in the scoring. Oh, so yeah. I think that's what it encourages, and that's that's why I like it personally, if that oh, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Well, it, most of the matches are entertaining, so I think it it turned out really, really well, except for like one or two kind of are like they're like three or four pretty bad matches but at adcc there were a lot of bad matches too so yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and this is the thing i think with adcc there is obviously some there's some technical play and i don't know if oh, what your thoughts are on this but you've obviously got that initial period where there's no points which in mm-hmm. theory would it. allow you to play a little bit but what it seems to do is just it forces people to just you know almost coast for that first period to save something in the tank for when the scoring does matter did you yeah. did you find that a little bit? Yeah, I hate it. It's it, I I really dislike it to be honest. Um, yeah, because you can just you can just chill. You can just chill. I, I I I don't like that, and I also don't like how there's a negative for guard pulling in the finals of ADCC. Uh, there's like I don't understand why you can go through the whole tournament and it's not a negative in the first five minutes, but then in the finals in the first ten minutes because they're twenty minute matches, it's a negative. I don't I don't understand the you have to basically have two totally different game plans for all the matches and then the finals. Um, and I, I hate the whole no points period. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like, if you would have watched uh, J rod versus John Carlo, he passed him um, two times, I believe. And it just didn't count for anything. And John Carlo was just chilling. So he like, he would pass him. John Carlo would just chill, let himself be pinned. And then he would just escape, just reset. And then he did that like two or three times. And then when points came on, he started to pick up the pace because Jay was just exhausted. So mm. it kind of, I found it like really favored, like, uh, it was like stalling a, a bit. Like, you're like, oh, what, what does it matter if he passes my guard? Like, I can just chill and save energy. So I, I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing. This is, this is why I asked about it because I almost feel like someone with your style would benefit more from the CJI, yeah. that rule set. Because you could just push the action and you potentially win the round on pushing the action. Yeah. So, yeah, it does seem to... We spoke to um, Brandon... What's his surname? 
McGaffrin, BMAC? Yes, or, yeah, yeah, that's him, yeah. Sorry, I can't pronounce his surname. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we spoke to him and uh, obviously he was uh, one of the commentators and we spoke to him about the rule set and he felt that it favoured wrestlers quite a bit because yeah. of your aggressive style with pushing the pace. Yeah, I would love, I would have loved to do it at some point. I mean, like I said, I would have fun. I don't care. It's, I just like big matches. So ho hopefully next time, but maybe not. I really, I'm, I don't know what the, uh, the criteria is for Craig to be quite honest. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Cause well, how is he going to, is he just going to do it in invitation only, or is it going to be some trials for it now or whatever? If they're going to do it yearly, they're going to have to start yeah. thinking of that sort of stuff. And they, no, I, I totally agree. I, I think it's so like, I heard it profited somehow. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard, uh, which is amazing. Cause I hope it just keeps going on forever, but it's like, hopefully I, hopefully if they want it to be as fair as it sounds, there should be a trials process um, and not just invites um, because no offense to some of the invites at CJI, but a lot of them didn't even place at their ADCC trials, you know? So that was like the big argument that Gordon used uh, was like uh, specifically at plus 80, there were like a lot of filler guys mm -hmm. Um and you're like, man, there probably would have been some better matches if they would have had these guys or these guys. Mm -hmm. And I heard Craig say that he wanted to get more of the better big guys, but a lot of them stayed in ADCC. So mm -hmm. I, I think it would be really interesting. Uh, hopefully they do some sort of trials process. Uh, I don't know. Again, but it's it's Craig's whatever. Like He can do whatever he wants. But yeah. it, would, it would make sense if there's actually some way that, you know, less popular people can have a chance to do those big tournaments you yeah. know and i hope they do it on a separate weekend now <laughs> you know he's kind of made his point as not a like it would be great if we could get all the best grapplers at both weekends you know at, yeah like, even if they're like a month apart or something i don't know yeah i agree yeah but who knows if they're running it annually then obviously adc's every two, oh, years. Yeah, every two years so you're, yeah. you're at the least going to have every other year where it's on a separate a separate do you, month. Yeah, do, you yeah, think, yeah. do you think gordon ever go over and try and win that million off of them i don't think so I... doesn't need the money mate it'd be so funny though wouldn't it i think it he would hates be them. so funny he yeah. does hate them yeah he i think he, like, he does hate genuinely them. hates them so yeah i don't know I, I think though if if i hated them and i could go and take a million quid off them i think it would it would spark me a little bit though no because you're, you're you're bringing the eyes in mate you'd be doing them a favor wouldn't you you think yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. different if, if you want gordon ryan then it's and you had that skill to do that then yeah but you're gordon ryan you're going to bring in the eyes aren't you he's so rich anyways it's i mean it's it's his pride too you know you just put a, a million in toehold isn't he is he yeah yeah, yeah, the yeah, flip -flops, yeah exactly put a million quid into that as if it's nothing yeah. so yeah he's definitely doing well they've done a lot of personal attacks towards him that are like in my opinion i think it's not cool you know but yeah it's uh i'm it's none of my business you know i have no beef with either one of them but it's yeah i i i, I still still coming from like the whole wrestling background thing i still think it's like kind of gross the way some of the jujitsu people treat each other at the higher levels i think that they are making it like really really personal and i think that's not super mature but also like someone's gonna call me like a, a dumbass because i i don't think that we should be like always name calling and you know throwing out each other's dirty laundry you know it's uh i don't know it seems like the adult way to think but yeah i i wonder how much of it's just promotion and showmanship you know even even with um like craig jones and gabby like we kind of all knew that was a lot of nonsense i think but but how they were how they were after like competing was actually really nice, like after you'd seen all that other stuff and you know as much as the um, the face off was kind of funny it was a bit cringy at points and it was very cringy yeah and a bit questionable in in, in some some of the comments <laughs> yeah but it, it was obvious you know once that that was something they'd come up with together because then afterwards they they kind of embraced each other and it was in some of what was said was really nice i thought so i wonder how much of it is is promotion but it's different when you've got two parties agreeing to do that opposed yeah. to using one as, as as cannon fodder i guess yeah that's yeah i think yeah definitely the the nuance of uh there's a bit of an agreement on one side and then on this side, it looks like they're just attacking Gordon personally, constantly, and uh, 
Yeah, I hopefully really hope that the Nicky Rod Gordon match happens. I have a feeling it's not going to happen this year. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw Gordon responded to it. and Hasn't he done his ACL? Uh, LCO, I think. LCO, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope the match I, – I love Gordon's terms, actually. I know some people are going to hate hate that I say that. I love the long sleeve rash guard and long sleeve uh, spats over your shoulder. I think it's amazing. In my some one of my friends is asking like, why do you think that, Brandon? Especially being a guy who likes to move a lot. But I'm like, well, in my opinion, if you're better at jujitsu than someone, which Nicky Rod claims to be better than Gordon, it shouldn't make a difference. That that it's a little that there's more grip. In fact, it should almost help you. So. I think Gordon's terms were pretty acceptable, and I ho- and I hope that Nicky Rod. I think. Uh, I think they'll do it. Yeah, I think after the call out, like Nicky Rod calling him out, um, I think Gordon is. I mean, he's he's number one pound for pound, so it's like I think his his terms have to be considered more than Nicky Rod's, you know. And Nicky Rod has all the all to win and nothing to lose, and Gordon has everything to lose and really not much to win, so. I hope that match happens. Uh, I have, like we said, Nicky Rod looks so amazing that he he could possibly win. But also, uh, I I don't know if what we saw at CJI is an, a good representation of how good Nicky Rod is, just because of the level of each opponent wasn't anywhere near as good as Gordon, like not even close. So. So I was really hoping to see him against Victor Hugo in the final, but obviously that didn't work out. Either, did it, so. hey, Lucas Kennard, man, what a beast. That dude's awesome. But that's jujitsu. Yeah. It looked, yeah, Victor is awesome. I think with um I think with Gordon, it's just his health in it. If 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 he can if he can get back to anywhere near his physical peak, I think he's gonna win, isn't he? That's the thing. That's the only reason I think Nicky will beat him is because yeah. his physicality over over Gordon could be overwhelming yeah. potentially but whether it is or not <laughs> again it's Gordon every time you think that he's not got anything left or he's saying he still wins doesn't he he still wins he still finds a way because he's that good yeah yeah I I totally agree and it's even if it was in the pit I know Nicky Rod said something about it being in the pit it's not like Gordon's gonna try to wrestle so it, I don't think it makes that much of a difference whether it's in a pit or if it's on the normal mat like Gordon's not the guy who's gonna be running out of bounds He's going to pull and I don't know. I really hope that match happens, you know, but we'll see. Yeah, we will, mate. Um, obviously, before you did the the World Championships, you did the trials and we, we've not spoke to you since that either, mate. So it'd be good to catch up about that because I thought yeah. you were great in the trials. Tell us about that experience. It was good. I was super sick at trials. And I honestly was like, I'm going to lose in the first round. Oh, no. so much, I had the flu. So I think I, I overtrained a little bit, like the week going into it. I think I should have dialed back a lot more and I didn't cause I was really excited. I, and I, I did good. I had like, I won like four or five matches. Um, my past, it felt good. Like my game plan was just, you know, get to headquarters, take my time, pass people. Cause I knew everyone's going to pull guard at every single match at that trial is everyone pulled the guard. Um, so it was interesting. I, I think I probably had my biggest win in my career was Brailler grout. Uh, he's one of Keenan, Keenan Cornelius's black belts. So that was, a as far as the trials run goes, that was the big win, you know, uh, I feel like I'm, it feels like so long ago trial. I feel like I'm way better than I was back then. I, I lost to Mike Perez. He's such a cool guy though. He's, he's really nice. We're, we're homies. We talked a lot at ADCC. Uh, man, I, I just feel like a completely different person. It's, it's hard to even reflect on trials because, uh, I don't think I was, I, I suck now, but I feel like I really, really sucked at trials. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. I, I'm just laughing because of how good you looked at the trials. Yeah, that was... <laughs> so to say you, you, you were rubbish then just makes me laugh. But no, I understand. Obviously, there, there's obviously transitions, isn't there, through, through it. But no, I thought you were good, mate. And I thought you... you just, I think it was just, again, your, it's your movement. I think for a big guy, I think people just assume you're just going to be fairly one-dimensional. But yeah. I thought you showed some really good jiu-jitsu, mate, throughout that. I thought you looked really good. Thank you. Yeah. I, I just try to like, I was doing my camps under JT. So my goal was like pressure and loose, like oh, just trying to play between like heavy pressure and headquarters and then passing loose and doing like knee cuts and stuff. 
Um, and then the, like I said, the match with Brailler was a really good one because we got into like a, a really crazy leg lock shootout that lasted like two minutes. It was just like, uh, it was very cool because most people don't know that I have, I, even though I ended up getting submitted with an Aoki from Mike Perez, I, I do think I have pretty good leg lock defense and I, I got to show it in that match. It's like a really, really good black belt. who's was also a brown belt world champ. So I was like, uh, I was really happy. I think that's my proudest match of my jujitsu career. Not because I, I beat him, but because I was able to show like, oh, hey, look, like I, I played bottom 50-50. I got into his legs. I caught his heel. And then when he caught, like when he got into my leg, I ended up taking his back. So it was, it was like the most jujitsu jujitsu match I've had. And <laughs> I'm really proud of that match. But, uh, yeah. And then with Mike Perez, it was, we got into like, a I tried to heel hook, I body like passed him and then he recovered. And then I tried, I tried to heel hook him. And man, I was such an idiot back then. Like <laughs> saying back then, like it was like 10 years ago, but I was such an idiot. I was like, uh, sometimes like I don't turn the killer instinct off. I saw his foot and I was like, I'm going to try to break your leg. And he alky locked me immediately when I tried to, and <laughs> people were like, Oh, you should have been able to slip out of that. And I was just like, okay. Yep, for sure. I'll, I'll keep that in mind next time. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a fun tournament, and I was really happy to watch. Uh, like I was I was happy to watch some of my friends like uh, compete, like Pixley. Um, well, I guess mostly Pixley, and yeah, it, it was it was. I don't really have anything else to say about it. It was a it was a fun time. Yeah, and it was good. It was a good trials. I, I really enjoyed it. You had um, Will Tuck it against uh, J Rod. Oh, in, that's in crazy, final, right? Yeah, and that, that's—I mean, you know—you put the rods in any match, and it's always an exciting one, right? But that was a really cool match. Yeah, reverse close guard. Yeah, so 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 Taki got in with what we covered with Owen Jones in the seminar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost the exact thing. So there it is. Taki's it's so evil. good. Isn't it? Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, he's good. I think it's, it's just a shame. I think Will Tackett was just a bit, a bit undersized. He's too small, wasn't he? He was only like 89 kilos, I think, in that over 80 bracket. Yeah. Do you feel like he could have just dieted down and got under that under 80? Because he looked like he had he, could, he had a little bit on him, definitely. He said he didn't want to go against his brother. Like, in a, in a, like uh, on his, he has a YouTube channel. It's just William Tackett BJJ, I think. And he said he just did not want to go against his brother. And he was confident. I, I thought it was a weird choice because... I think abs absolutes are weird in general, but him bumping up to go to plus 80 at that level is, is really tough. I mean, I guess Dante Leon did it at ADCC, but like it's hard to even imagine like someone going through a bunch of true ultra heavies that are like black belt level guys um, when you're that small. But And he had the worst possible matchup. He had like one of the biggest guys. Yeah. Well, when he lost, he just got he just got he just got pinned, and he just couldn't get out. Yeah, really. yeah and it was just him like him. you could tell that he was better at jujitsu the whole way through. You know what I mean? Like yeah, everything he done sure. was better, and he was putting on him for a bit. But he was so big, he was just wearing him out. And then it was yeah, by yeah. the end of it, it was just like pinned him, and he just couldn't move. And it was like I felt so bad for him because you know how good he is. You know how good yeah. he is. If he's fighting someone at 88, 89, he's he's smashing them. So I think was, he should have uh, stayed yeah, at ADCC. He, he should have stayed at ADCC. I, I think he could win ADCC, but I think he could. Or he should have went yeah. down to AE and then to and tried to go yeah. for the million because he would have if he was in in that in that bracket, he would have definitely been there or thereabouts, wouldn't he? Yeah, well, that, they probably should have done what the, the Rotolos well, did done and just they, split the money. Well, yeah, where they they, they 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 got an agreement to be on opposite sides of the bracket, and then you can only yeah. get the final anyway. And then either way, you got the got the cash right. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It was it was a bad decision, I think, to do yeah. plus eighty. He's he's such an awesome guy, though, uh, William. Mm -hmm. He's he's super kind to me every time I see him. He's he's one of my favorite people to watch. But yeah, I knew it. I knew plus eighty was not going to be good for him. It's those dudes are giants. Yeah, but no, it was good. But no, the trials was good, man. It was good to watch. Mate, what I wanted to ask, obviously, in the in the World Championships, you were wearing your glasses, and I saw um, Chewie did a video about this. But something happened, I think, with your eye in training, right? To, uh, and that's yeah. why you're wearing the glasses. What's what happened with that? What's what's going on? So uh, I was visiting a local gym here in Montreal, and. Uh, I was going with like this white or blue belt. I really don't know. He was a big guy. And uh, I was like, hey, we're not going to do leg locks. And he was like, okay. Well, he ends up getting me into outside Ashi. And uh, 
I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to break your fucking leg. I just told you like, well, I was like, we're not. And he, he like cranks like an ankle lock and I'm like, whatever, like I'm chilling. And I like step over into a position called 90, 10 and I heel hook him. Well, as I heel hook him, instead of tapping, he pulls his foot back and kicks me in the eye. And then, uh, my eye, I, my eye got a really bad infection and then I got a corneal abrasion. And then for like four days, I, I couldn't open my eyes at all. So like my eyes were just shut. Like this is a really bad infection. It was, it was the most painful thing ever. Um, and my doctor was basically like, you need to be careful. Like if you're going to keep doing this, like you, you need to probably start wearing si- some type of protection because it, it took four days for me to be able to see again, mm. like for me to not just to see, but for me to be able to open both of my eyes. So he kicked one eye, but the infection spread in between both of my eyes. Um, and then it took about another week for like my eyes to actually start to clear up and for like the, the light and stuff not to be painful. And then I was just like, uh, I need to wear goggles. There's a, a wrestler. Oh man. I, I can't believe I just forgot his name, but there was a wrestler who, faced uh one of the goats in wrestling Kel Sanderson in the finals and he wore goggles like he was famous for wearing goggles and I was like oh I'm gonna figure that out so I did some research and I found uh these really really good goggles called rec specs and they're about 150 to 200 bucks but they're like really good goggles they're not like the crappy ones you get on Amazon and I was just like okay I'm never gonna grapple without these again you know and I'll comp- now it's like after the pin match, I was like, okay, I, I, I probably am not going to compete with them because it's like the, the risk is low, but training, like even t- like every day I wear them in training and, uh, it's just like, it was so scary. It was very traumatic, like emotionally traumatic, like trying to come back into do jujitsu. I was very like scared. And, uh, now I'm not like now because I just wear the goggles and I put headgear over them to, to lock them down. And it, it's perfect. Uh, it was a very scary experience. Um, I was just like, it was like one of those moments like that. You're like, man, do I really want to do this? You know, like it, yeah. it made me question if I really wanted to do jujitsu. And I was like, okay, yes, I do. Let's wear some goggles and headgear and let's, let's be safe, you know? And so for the rest of my life, I'm going to wear these goggles and headgear and my eyes pretty much fine now. Um, okay. That's good. It, it still has a little bit of a scar. So like if, when they scan it, there's still like a scar in my eye. So like when I wake up, it's still get, it's a little bit blurry in the morning. You know, when I get hydrated and stuff, it's fine, but it's probably going to be like for the rest of my life, a little bit messed up. Like the vision is just a little bit worse now. And so now I, I don't mess with it. Like I always wear the goggles as stupid as they look. When I'm in practice, I wear goggles and headgear just to, to strap them on and I feel fine. I, I'm able to go super hard again. And uh, yeah, so all, all is pretty much good. Yeah, man. So sorry to hear that happen, mate. What an idiot. The guy was an idiot. Yeah. We we often talk about how, you know, sort of new white belts or spazzy blue belts or whatever are, are kind of the most dangerous people on the mats. But I think when you're visiting and, you know, you're telling somebody that we're not doing this and then they do it in a way, just, I don't know. I, I, heard, Craig, I heard Craig Jones talking about this recently where... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where he was basically just saying that, like he just f- basically flat refuses now to, tr- to to roll with people because if you've got a bit of a name um, or you're good and you go into like a gym, he just said it's it's just like people take it as an opportunity to try and like sculpt you somehow and yeah. you know so so I think it might have been him. Lex yeah, he was saying it on the Lex yeah. Friedman podcast. He was yeah, saying uh, that because Lex was struggling with snipers. it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Chewy just came out with a video about that. Like it's like it's it's so true, but. I'm I'm at the point now. It's uh I love it at uh when we were at when I was at Pedigo, Pixley was talking like uh when Pixley would go to seminars, like guys would really try to wrestle him hard, and Pixley's like I'm just gonna fucking boom them. Like if they try me, he's like I, so like me now. I went to a seminar with with the because uh, every week we were going to seminars like every weekend, um just to help out and drill whatever with Heath and this fucking big guy like just like Greco Roman like he's like. 280 he like greco romans and like steps aside and throws me and i'm like i'm going to fucking kill you now and so like because <laughs> i'm just i'm like why do why are people like this like i'm we're chilling we're just trying to have fun like i'm not i'm not trying to win a gold medal in practice and these people they so now i have like a rule i'm like like if you if, if we i'm gonna grapple with you like but if i touch you and you're like stiff i'm gonna beat the fuck out of you like there's a zero percent chance because that's when you get hurt like 
now it's like, I'm not going to hurt you. I, I, I don't think Craig should have done what he did with injuring people. I think that was a little bit immature, but like, I will like, feel, like I will, I will like spiritually hurt you. Like I'm, I'm just going to beat the <laughs> shit out of you and then I'm going to choke you underneath your nose. Like I'm not going to break your shit like Craig, but I'm, I'm going to, even if I feel it, I don't even need you to do anything to me. Like if I feel it, I'm just going to try to beat the shit out of you. And if I can't beat the shit out of you, I can't believe I'm doing a seminar at your gym. Like <laughs> that, that's that because it, it's a, it's a real thing. Like, you know, I, I don't trust anyone now. I'm like, if I don't know you and we roll, I, I try to like, if we ever get the chance to roll, you guys will feel like I try to be very soft. Like mm. it's like Chewy taught me that. Like, I'm not going to be like, Oh, like I'm going to touch and you're barely even going to feel me. Like I'm going to be like, Oh, okay. We're flowing. Like I'm moving, whatever. Cause I don't, it's a relationship thing when you roll, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I don't have anything to prove in fucking practice, but the second I feel you're, you touch me, you're like, I'm like, I'm going to fucking beat the shit out of you because now after my eye thing happened, especially I'm like, I, I don't trust anyone. Um, it, it, it sucks, especially being a, like you said, like my name is getting a little bit bigger. Um, and now people are seeing me compete and stuff on top of me being a bigger human being and a wrestler. So people just think, okay, he's a bigger guy and he's a wrestler. He doesn't care if I be a spaz. And you're like, no motherfucker. I don't want you to be a spaz just cause I'm a wrestler. I don't want you to be like a spaz out with me. So, uh, it happens to Chewy too. Like I said, he made that video. It happens to, it happens to, to any of us, you know, and it's a, like a really unfortunate thing because it's like, you just want to have fun and, uh, you know, teach and then roll with the people you're teaching. Like I have a really big seminar tour coming up. Like next week I'm teaching at like five different gyms in the Toronto area. And I'm like, I'm going to tell them everyone, like right before we roll, I'll be like, Hey guys, I'm excited to roll with everyone. But please, if you go hard, I'm going to try to fuck you up. Like, please just <laughs> chill. Like, um, and it sounds yeah, like, that's a it good sounds, way. yeah, it, it's, uh, it sounds like a dickhead thing to do, but if you don't do it, there's always one guy. There's always one person who's just like, I am going to get you. And you're just like, bro. You got to remember that for them, you're their ADCC, that you're yeah. the best thing that they, if they submit you, that's their, that's their thing. And that's yeah. why I think people just, they just go too far. And, and, yeah. you know, I just, I just, I don't understand. We, me and Paul are quite lucky. We, we we train at a gym called Flow. And it's very much based off of that flowy movement. So uh, again, if I train at a different gym, I struggle with that a little bit because, you know, we we roll quite light and we flow row and, and you know, we get harder progressively, especially me and yeah. Paul because we know each other. Yeah. But if I'm rolling with someone new, I'm really super light um, and try yeah. to be light. Whereas I go to another gym and it's not like they're um, doing it on purpose, but they don't have that same instinct. It's like murder, death, kill straight away. And Bro, I've struggled with that horrible. a few times when I'm going to an open mat. And especially like it's nowhere near on your level, but you know, locally we're known for the podcast and bits and pieces. And I can definitely feel they'll go, oh, I love your podcast. And then they're trying to heal up me in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, fucking great. Like you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. and, it, and it's, it, it's that same type of thing. And, and me going to other gyms, I'm definitely like same sort of thing. Like I, I don't go easy now. If I go in there, I go hard. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. You're like, bro, like I, I love what Chewie said. He was like, if you submit me, it does not take away all the things that I have done. You know, yeah, in practice. Yeah, great you know, thing, like yeah. that's the mindset. Today I got submitted at TriStar. I got submitted like eight or nine times because we're just fucking, we're just, we're figuring shit out. You know what I mean? Like I love, I, shout out to TriStar. I love TriStar. Like for us has such a good culture where it's just like everyone's flowing. You're going hard, right? But it's like, you're flowing. You're, you're not afraid to like get put in bad positions. If you get tapped, mm -hmm. you're just like, whatever. Like there's not really this like hierarchy of like, he's the best guy in the room or he's the best. Guy. It's like, bro, we're, we're trying to figure shit out, you know? Um, but not everywhere is like that. And it's, it's like really unfortunate because they're like, Oh fuck. They're, they're excited to go back home to their girlfriend and be like, Hey, I, I submitted, I submitted Danny. Yeah, from the podcast, you, the podcast I listen to every week. Yeah, I submitted Danny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the funny, the funniest one I had. I just remembered what made me stop doing it. So I was rolling with a guy, and uh, it was it was all right. And I, I submitted him a few times, uh, and then I knee, I went to knee bar him again, and then I let go of the knee bar because I'd already just knee barred him like two minutes before. And then as I'm let go of the knee bar, I went to like just step out of it. 
and he toehold me like as hard as he could and like <laughs> yeah. my, my ankle exploded and I was like what was that I was like I'll just let you go and he was like I'm so sorry and I'm like what did you yeah. do and he was like he <laughs> was like oh, do I, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he was just like oh I'm sorry and I was like yeah I, I understand you're sorry but like uh, you could clearly see I had you in a knee bar I didn't put it on let you go and then you toe hold me I was like fucking prick <laughs> yeah it's mad some of the worst injuries I've had uh, have, have been yeah. visiting there was one occasion where I, I was I went up sort of north in, in the UK and I think it was uh, a newish purple belt and I went to a gym and they were really friendly but I rolled with this uh, white belt and he was a big guy and he was like, oh, do you want to roll? I was like, yeah, yeah, no worries. And uh, I started rolling with him and just going quite light. And I, I just left my arm somewhere I shouldn't because he was a white belt. And I thought I'd give him a, you know, a little bit of stuff to work with. And he just cranked on this straight arm lock, <laughs> like slammed it on. I, I just kind of slipped out of it, but in the process, just cracked my elbow. <laughs> just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. And what made matters worse is when we finished, uh, it turns out he was actually a blue belt but he'd forgotten his belt. So they just gave him a white belt and he just didn't even think to mention it. <laughs> so I thought he was a white belt. It was actually a blue belt and he was jacked yeah. as well. So he was probably so happy. He was like, he was like, honey, I submitted a purple belt today. So yeah. you might as well give me my purple belt. Matter of fact, give me my brown belt. <laughs> give me my brown belt. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking hate those people. Chewy so much. And I, I, I me, Chewy, me and Chewy are like, uh, we're so night and day. Like, but being around him, at least uh, talking to him as we talk every day. still, it's like, fuck, he's, he, he, He's very level-headed, which has helped me become a lot more level-headed. But uh, mm. initially, like old Brandon, three years ago, when I three three and a half years ago when I first started, I would just beat the I would like hurt you for sure. <laughs> but like now, I'm just like okay, I'm just gonna fuck you up, but not injure you. Uh, so, so there's so many people like that out here. I love Chewie's philosophy. I think he's I, I do think too, he's man. genuinely got it nailed. Like yeah. we, we spoke to a lot of people, and I think Chewie has got his whole outlook of jujitsu absolutely nailed i think he's uh you know he's 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 kind and tough at the same time <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you know what i mean like you can't take the piss out of him but he's just you know he's fair yeah he's he's just a normal guy i think that's why he's he's so relatable like he's not this special jujitsu practitioner he's just like he's pretty good he's tough but he's not like a world he's not like world beater but he's just a cool dude who's been doing jujitsu for like you know, 20 years, he's been around all the stupid stuff, all the good stuff. And he's experienced a lot. So it's like, it's like, uh, he's like everyone's diary for jujitsu. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's been there with all that stuff. Um, he's very level headed, you know, very, very mature. Uh, I wish, like I said, I wish more people were, were like that, but it, it does take experience. I guess that's like the, uh, that's a part of life is people have to be taught those like lessons like those teachable moments have to happen where like when the blue belt you know snaps on a, a quick shotgun arm bar you gotta be like bro is, is that really necessary you know <laughs> he does a good job doing that where it's like i just want to like fuck the person up but he I, because of him I've, I've gotten a lot better at just being like just relax bro like it's okay um but yeah it's Enough talking nice things about Chewy. Fuck him. He's gonna see. He's gonna, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we never actually thanked you uh, to to chat to you about hook assault with Chewy for the conversation, mate. We had a really fun chat oh, with yeah. him. He enjoyed it. He loved it. He did loved he? It. He told me he loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did really well for us. Actually, it, it was one of our really? biggest. Yeah, still is one of our our most viewed episodes. Um, yeah. So yeah, we had a really fun chat. It was funny actually because uh, we pulled some of the short form content from that that we did, and some of the things he said, obviously, were a little bit controversial to some people. But obviously, within the context of what he was saying, it it was it was spot on. Um, but I yeah, I, I had a voice note from a from a, a sort of older school instructor in the UK who'd heard one of the clips and was like, "That guy's wrong. He's, he's saying all the wrong things." I was like, "No, no, no. You got you got to listen to the full episode because yeah, he's yeah. actually spot it's hard. on." But yeah. yeah it's funny man that's the uh that's the issue with like i love short form stuff because it it it's a good uh it's a good step into the door right like uh like for me i i post short short form technique videos it's a good step into the door but it doesn't really tell the full story you know um that's but like that's why i have instructionals or that that's why there's a full podcast behind the podcast clips but it's human now human nature that like you take what you see in a short form thing and you create that and assume that it's the full story um i don't know for me it's like the short form stuff is supposed to lead to the long form stuff yeah, yeah. same thing 
But like very often people see the short form stuff and they're like, no, you fucking idiot. You're so <laughs> stupid. This would never, the, the one that gets me like, this would never work. You're like, what, what the fuck does that mean, bro? Like, what <laughs> is like, uh, bro, this, it, or you say something like, man, if I say I love ADCC and I think CGI was a really good thing. Someone's going to be like, oh, you, but you said you love ADCC. So that means you said, fuck Craig Jones. And I'm like, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I said at all, bro. I'm just, I say, I love ADCC has good things. CGI has good things. They both have bad things. That's it, bro. But uh, short form content, it's like, I've learned to be more careful about what I say because a lot of times people will take shit out of context. And you're just like, I think one thing that we've tried doing really well is not taking anything out of context and try and give in yeah. like a fair thing to our guests if that makes sense because yeah. we don't yeah, want to create enemies we, we want to try and give you you know the best representation we can and yeah. never take things out of context because there's definitely times where you know we're editing and you're like god you could you if if you were <laughs> one of those people you could ruin <laughs> people you know what i mean because yeah. no, for you know, sure. out of context is like crazy and and i hope as as we're like progressing and keep going you know we keep that well we would we keep that reputation yeah and keep, some keep providing I, uh, it good I, uh, I, I made a video on YouTube saying like, I, I really appreciate CGI for like the opportunity to get paid to do ADCC and participate in ADCC. And some fucking retarded BJJ newsletter was just like, Brandon Reed says he's happy that Craig Jones pushed, uh, like forced Mojasm to pay the athletes finally. And I'm just like, that's not what I said at all, you fucking idiot. Like, I was like, bro, what the f like, what is wrong with you people? Like, because they like one thing taken out of context can create enemies, right? And it's like I don't have, I don't want any enemies. I definitely don't want to be an enemy of Mo Jasm, and I definitely don't want to be an enemy of Craig Jones. Both of those guys, I I do not want to be on either one of their hit lists. And yeah. uh, oftentimes it's like this: like you have to be they or th like you have to be with this team or that team. And if you say one little thing that makes people think that you're on this team though. No, now let me, let me write a controversial article so that this team gets mad. And I'm like, I fucking hate the internet sometimes, but it, well, it, we were it, like it with Jean Jay, weren't we? Mm. Jean Jay Ribeiro. He, he talked about uh, CJI and about ADCC and we were like trying to clip it up and there was no way we could have done him justice without throwing yeah. him under the bus. <laughs> so we ended up doing it as like a 15 minute clip and just putting it on YouTube and just being like, this is the faux unedited Reaction. clip this yeah. is what he yeah. said because we knew yeah. if we had done it another way it would have just come out terribly and and it didn't craig didn't react great to it anyway yeah. and, I, <laughs> and i felt a bit bad about it but we at least from our point of view we we put the faux thing out yeah it wasn't like yeah. A, a minute yeah you clip. guys did a great job i watched it i watched it and but it's like of course craig is gonna be he's gonna take it see it's like craig I understand Craig's mission and goal. It's a very good thing, but often like we're so married to our ideas that when we hear something that may be seen as like a threat to those ideas, like we get very emotional. And I don't think Shanji was attacking CJI. I don't No, I, I, he, he actually wasn't, mate. If no. you watch a full podcast as well, he wasn't. Yeah. He was saying it was like a good thing for grapplers and Victor Hugo was in it and you know, he said a lot of good things, but yeah. again, it's like something someone's probably shown Craig out of context a uh, clip. Yeah. Yeah, exactly and that's an issue. Yeah, did you see did you see what Craig did with 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 the clip? No, I didn't see. I think it was making fun of the Hall of Fame or something. I, yeah, I didn't see that was it. it. So, so in that 15 minute like conversation where he was a very, you know, he, he he kind of gave a very balanced view of the whole situation. There was one bit where just just he, he just suddenly thought and it was oh actually like it's gonna you know it's a bit of a shame because I had this speech plan and it's gonna be a little bit like rubbish because of the situation. Yeah, and he just kind of made a little bit of a throwaway comment amongst like loads of really good statements and then and then craig basically clipped that and said sorry guys cj is off it's going to ruin zanji's like hall of fame speech and then like yeah. zoomed in on my face just like <laughs> yeah. nodding at one <laughs> like i love the exposure but absolutely stitched us up with that clip yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's sucks, the risk man. though right it, it sucks that craig sank to that level to do that because that makes sense for like the the nerds who are writing these stupid bjj articles like those guys are nobodies. Like they're faceless people who want attention. So it's like, yeah, they can do their stupid clip. But it's like, I feel like 
and Craig, I'm not attacking you. If you somehow click this, but I feel like it's our responsibility to like, to like look into those things before we have like some type of emotional attack towards it, you know, uh, or emotional reaction towards it. Cause I, I don't like, it's like, we're not allowed to have like, like Shanji had a very, like what he was saying was very wholesome. Like, man, it sucks because like I, I've worked really hard. I dreamed for this thing. And now it's, it's not really going to be as special as it could have been. That's what's, I don't see what's wrong with that. It's not saying fuck CJI because of my hall of fame thing. And I, I was very surprised and like very disappointed that Craig took it that way. I don't know if he, he, he took it any, any way to be fair though, mate. I think he, I think we're British. So we kind of get the Aussie humor, the Australian humor a little bit. Mm. And I think it was more, it wasn't that he took it any which way. I think it was probably more that he just sought his ammunition and just rubbed his hands and went, cheers, guys, you set that one up, I'm going to knock it in. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. So I think it was probably more that. But, um, but yeah, it's just a funny old, funny old business, mate, being, in, uh, being on social media and, and obviously the risk. Yeah. But, yeah, but no, it was a great conversation with Chewy, though. We really enjoyed that. So thanks again. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you mentioned TriStar a little bit and, and for us, and obviously you've moved away uh, from training sort of full-time with Chewy to, to Canada now. So let's chat, on, chat about that, mate. Be good. So tell us about the, the kind of motivation and the reasons for moving and then obviously how the training's been. Yeah, so my girlfriend's from Montreal. We've been dating uh, for okay. like a little like a little, like a little over three years now, like three and a, three years and something, something. And I've been visiting Montreal like basically every two months I would visit Montreal for like two weeks to a month. And it was just getting really expensive. I was just like, oh, we've been doing this for three years. Let's just move in together and to be honest, I was a bit tired of Louisville, uh, just as a city. I don't like it very much. Um, and I love Montreal. It's so beautiful. It's so safe. Um, just like everywhere, it has its own problems. Like there's lots of homeless people here, literally just like anywhere. Right. But, uh, we live on like a canal It's it, and next to a really fresh food market. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, and then the jujitsu was pretty good. Like it, it's like relatively good. So, uh, it was a pretty easy choice for me to come out here, uh, just visiting it for so long i was just like man this is awesome i want to live here i had thought i wanted to live here like since day one that i came to montreal i was like oh i'm so in love with this place and i was finally able to afford to do it so just decided one day a couple months later after saving up some money drove up to montreal um from louisville uh got like a, a work holiday visa and now i'm here like guaranteed for two years and I'll see what happens after that, but most likely I'll just end up staying here. Um, I, I, at first I was training quite a bit everywhere here and there, and I was still traveling a lot to do like ADCT trials camps and stuff. But, uh, I just started training like pretty consistently again for like, after like I held up some injuries, uh, at TriStar. So I guess I've been training there for about four weeks, three or four weeks. And it's awesome. I, I don't only exclusively train at TriStar. Um, I still train quite a bit, like Montreal is pretty big. So I train, uh, at a couple other gyms that I teach at, but m like my baseline training is 12 o'clock, like pro training sessions at TriStar with Faraz. And, and they're awesome. He's man. He's so intelligent. I never met a coach that was so like in, in depth with technique, like Chewie's very good at what he does, but for us is so good at everything. Like he's very like, all right guys, like every day it's like, uh, it's a bit faster pace, you know, cause, um, in true say too, like it's more traditional gym there. So it's like more white belt, blue belts at Frost is they have like an actual like pro training time, like a 12 o'clock where it's like, everyone is minimum, a really good blue belt to purple belt. And like you're the system is like, all right, every day you do a takedown, a pass, a submission type thing, you know? So it's not like, it's not two hours of half guard. It's like, you're going through full systems and then you're doing that five times a week. So it's, it's made my game a lot better. Like it's opened my mind up to a lot of stuff. And then like the roles are really great because, um, Montreal is a very young city. Uh, it's, I think it has like some, maybe the most universities in all of Canada, right? It's like, as far as like a, like a town. Um, so there's lots of young people like around my age where it's like in Louisville, there's like no young people. Like my youngest training partner was like, like 30, you know? Um, and that, that, that can be difficult. That can be really difficult because it's not hating on anyone who's 30. 
it's just saying that, oh, if I want to work on leg lock defense, most older people are not, and 30 is not old. It just means like in the, the context of starting jujitsu, it's mm-hmm. old. Lots of those people aren't doing leg locks, right? So being a tri-star is like humbling when I'm doing very specific situational rounds with my friends who are a lot smaller than me and they can catch me and stuff. And now I have the ability to get more reps in like very specific areas against much higher level guys in those very specific areas um, than I had in Louisville. And uh, it's it's so awesome. And then for us, knows everything about every, like he knows so much. Is you're like, hey, what about this takedown for all? Like, what do you, I've been wrestling my whole life and for us probably knows more about takedowns than me because he's like a nerd, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazier. You know, what would you do in this position? I feel like I'm able to brainstorm a lot more. And then I have such good partners that like uh, a couple of my partners, they teach classes at other schools here in Montreal. So like I'll go visit their class at a different school just to work on, like I said, like my very basic things, like I'm really working on guard retention right now. I couldn't really do that in Louisville. Like I couldn't just be like, okay, this really good black belt that I train with and then uh, at noon, he's going to be teaching at six or seven o'clock. I'm going to go learn from him after we've trained together. Um, so it's really diversified my training and I think it's, it's making me a lot better, you know? So I'm excited to see what it, it looks like a year, uh, a year into actually training there consistently um, on top of like doing all my training trips at Pedigo. Like I'm going to go back to Pedigo in a couple, like six weeks or something to do a camp for Nobi worlds. So it, it's awesome. I, I love it here. I love TriStar in specific. Yeah, that's really cool, man. It sounds like a really good move. And you, you mentioned offline that you're still technically under Chewy for your belts and everything. Yeah, so I'm under Chewy for my belts. It's, it's so complicated. So Chewy is still going to be the guy who promotes me. Um, I just It's just kind of how I am. But like when I compete now, I compete under Pedigo. So I train at TriStar, but I do all of my big camps at Pedigo. So like when I did ADCC, like the team that I was under was Pedigo Submission Fighting. When I do Nogi Pans and then Nogi Worlds this year, I'll be under Pedigo Submission Fighting. Um, it's just because, like, like I said, I'm doing my camps with them. They're not making me pay for anything. You know, it's like the least I can do is help them collect team points. Whereas, like, our gym at Derby City, like, no one's going. Like, you're not trying to win a team trophy, you know. Whereas, like, Pedigo, they have – every year they have, like, a real shot of, like, winning these really big things. And the least I can do is do my part when they're – giving me this training for free you know so i'm a bit of a jujitsu nomad in, in the sense of who i get my belt from who i represent in tournaments and then where i primarily train at you know i, I love it though it's great yeah that no, sounds good man and yeah for us is is obviously been on the scene for years obviously famous for for being gsp's coach back in the day and, yep. and roy mcdonald and the, the ufc guys but he's always i know he's worked closely with john danahan away certainly with gsp but he's always reminded me of that sort of character with that level of wisdom always got these really amazing like theories and philosophies around training like in addition to like the the technical knowledge so yeah it must be awesome training with him it's insane and he's hilarious he's i think you guys would like his humor it's like he He's off the wall, man. Sometimes the stuff he says, and I, I love it. I'm like, man, he, he's a he's a boy's boy, you know. Um, <laughs> it it's very cool, you know. It's it's very different. He's very different than Chewy, and that's not good or bad. It's just it's just a very different environment. Um, and I'm I feel like it's what I really needed because I, I love visiting Pedigo, and I I tell them this all the time. So it's not a secret. I hate Mount Vernon though. Like as a city, it's like a very countryside city. So it's like, I love Pedigo. If you took Pedigo and you put it in Montreal, I would train nowhere else. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big city boy and I do not, I just cannot live in a, like a very small town. It's like the best gym for me, the best gym in the world is Pedigo. But the, the location is not ideal for me. Um, so for us, it's, it's a really good close second, you know, it's, and and it has its own advantages as far as like the the level of like technical intricacies that Faraz has. I, I don't think there's really any coach who's better than him as far as like very small technical areas, you know. Um, so I, I'm super lucky. Yeah, and I feel like he's the sort of coach that would really look after your welfare and your well being as well. I know he's talked before about you know sort of not not burning out, not training to to you know sort of your max and that type of thing. How do you find like the pace of of the training there? It's good. I, he's really good at it, man. It's, uh, I probably, I used to do like 10 rounds every day. Like 
when I used to train. Now I do four, like max four. So, um, and I think it comes with the culture of it. Like we always do seven minute rounds, you know, but it's always like first round is a flow roll. And then two, you have two pretty hard rounds. And then the last round is a, it's like kind of like a flow, you know? Um, so it's my actual, like the, the intensity is a little higher, but the volume is a lot lower than I'm used to. But I've, I feel pretty healthy because of it. And then the, the technical level of my average partner is much higher than it was when I was at Derby City, uh, excluding Chewy. Like, Chewy is still one of the best people I've rolled with. Um, but just on average, eh, when you compare the gyms, like the technical level, I get so much more out of four rounds there than I got out of 10 rounds at like a pretty, you know, pretty good gym, but like not great gym. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is a great gym, by the way. Chewy hears this. I think it's a great gym. <laughs> I love the people there. I just mean the, the technical level and the age, you know, it's like you're going to get a lot more out of like really good purple belts who are 26 years old than, you know, probably like a 35 year old purple belt who has, who only trains twice a week, you know? So it's really nice. You're definitely becoming a, a social media veteran, mate. The amount of times you've just clarified a couple of points <laughs> <laughs> to your comments. <laughs> Dude. It's it's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> it's all the time, though, isn't it? You say one thing and you get the comments. We get them in our inbox all the time, don't we? Just random things or comments. Yeah, you've, yeah. It's it's frustrating, man. It's uh, yeah, it's really weird. It, it's interesting, you know. Yeah. I yeah, it's it's weird. It's like we choose this life, though. You know, I I wouldn't rather do anything else, but what I what, what I'm doing now. No, it's all good fun. But no, I, I look forward to seeing like your, yeah, your future performances, mate, and your development, obviously training, you know, in those places, you know, with the foundation you've already got. So, you know, it's going to be awesome. I wanted to ask what was next, obviously on the agenda. So it's Nogi Worlds, is it? Yeah. So we got PANS first, okay. which is November 3rd, I believe. So yeah. PANS at Purple Belt and then Nogi Worlds at Purple Belt. Okay. Is PANS, PANS Gi or Nogi? No gi, no gi, no gi. Okay. I haven't trained in the gi in like two years. Have you not? Okay. No, I, I a year and a half. I, I I do every once in a while. Like if one of my friends really wants me to do so, there's like a, a good seminar around. I'll do a gi seminar. But uh, yeah, it's just everything is no gi. Like as far as like if you're gonna make money, I'm not making money money from no gi pans or no gi worlds. But I kind of figured I should go you know to kind of pay back pedigo in that way you know what i mean like i didn't really want to go but i was like ah it helped they really want to win their their team trophy so i was like oh I'll, I'll do my best hopefully i don't lose in the first round that'd be fucking hilarious and, you know but we'll see purple belts are freaking tough man someone's gonna be like oh he's a sandbagger going to a purple belt tournament these adult purple belts man they're freaking good so we'll see how it goes Mate, it's, it's mad. We had uh, this week's episode. I don't know if you've seen it. Well, obviously, when this goes out, it would have been a while ago. But yeah, we had um, a guy called Tom, who's head of Atos UK. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, and he he made a comment. We just put the show out, was it today, I think, where he was talking about how a world champion from like 2001 wouldn't win Purple Belt World, Worlds at, you know, in 2024 because, you know, he, he just said that the, the standard now is, is insane for Purple Belt. Yeah. So. They're so good. They're so freaking good now. Well, they're, they're up and coming, aren't they? You know, those guys yeah. that you're going to face in the adult, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones who are going to be the next group of black belts in, in a few years. And they're the ones who no, are going to be sure. competing at the top, you know? Yeah. I faced like two guys, like me and Pixley had a match like three years ago at Blue Belt. And then the year after I had a match with a guy named Alex Grandy, who, who ended up going to ADCC the same year as me. So it's like, it wasn't very far off of me, Pixley, Grandy and other guys who were just at blue belt and purple belt who like two, a year to two years later, we were already in ADCC. It's like those, those freaking guys are tough, man, because they're usually the guys that are full time. And if you're full time, it doesn't take, it's not going to take that long to bridge the gap. If you're a purple belt into like the black belt level, I, I think. Yeah, I agree, mate. It's 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 mad. And did you did you do um were you purple? Did you did no no gi worlds previously, right? And come close. Yeah, I did it. I did it twice. I did. I won blue belt worlds, and then I lost at Pixley in the finals of the absolute. And then the year after, I did purple belt worlds. Yeah. And I got DQ'd in the finals for reaching. That's right. 
Yeah, okay. Fucking, I was. I'm not gonna do that this year. You. That was. <laughs> I did. I did not know jujitsu that time that I got second at purple. I was just like, I'm gonna try something that. But like now, I have a pretty good system, and I'm like, okay, I I know what I want to do, and I'm not gonna freak out and try to leg lock anyone this time. <laughs> yeah, it was so stupid. But hopefully, I win. Yeah, I'm I'm op- I'm optimistic for you, mate. But I'll uh, yeah, I'll be watching somewhere when that's on for sure. So I'll be cheering yeah. you on from the UK. But no, I think uh, yeah, I, I think you've got a very good chance with that one, mate. So best of luck with it. Thank you. Um, tell us real quick about obviously what you got going on with instructionals and seminars, mate. Um, we'll wrap it up in a second because we've kept you a little while. But feel free to kind of plug away and tell our audience about what you got and, and what's uh, available for them, mate. So I got like a really big Canadian seminar tour coming up. I think I have 15 seminars booked for this month, like all together, like this month, October and November. So I'll next week or I guess in like two days, I'm going to drive down to Toronto. So anyone who's in the Toronto area, I have five seminars, one every single day in different parts of Toronto. Toronto is freaking huge. So there's at least one, you can see all those on my Instagram page. And then, I have some in like the Atlantic Canadian area. I mean, like New Brunswick, uh, uh, Halifax, et cetera. So I have so many seminars going on right now. As far as instructionals, I'm, I have some at brandonreaddirects.com. I need to change that name though. It's a, it's kind of narcissistic to have a website with my name, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I hate that name. I I'm going to change that. So, so maybe that's uh, adjusted, but as far as dropping new instructionals, it'll probably be a while. Uh, I have so many now. I think I have like 10, you know, so I'll probably wait for until I hit something cool again. I haven't hit anything super cool in a while. So when I hit something super cool, I'll, I'll drop another instructional probably January or February, but until then nothing new anytime soon. Yeah. No worries, man. Do you want to shout out any sponsors or any teammates or anything? Um, yeah, no, just LXB, they're my uh, they're my gear sponsor for when I compete. And yeah, as far as team, yeah, you know, Pedigo. I, I love Pedigo. They're awesome. Heath is the man. Pixley's the man. Couch is the man. And all the other people. I mean, there's a million of them there. So that that's pretty much it for me. Yeah. Also, mate. Yeah. Appreciate you coming back on, mate. It's been great to catch up again. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Have a, have a good chat and obviously you've done so much in that time so uh so yeah i think there was lots of good uh, conversation there yeah. mate. And no doubt you're going to keep getting better and uh you know i'm sure you'll uh you'll get that big win and that that explosion of popularity at some point mate i feel like it's just a matter of time then i'll retire because i'm doing yeah, this. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this shit's so hard i'm so tired of doing it but we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually yeah mate thanks thanks again buddy let's catch up soon thank you thank you